My name is Lee Carson. I'm a layman and a teacher of the fellowship class of the First United Methodist Church of Bullard, Texas. The class you're watching was started to provide an adult Sunday school class during the time that our church was closed because of the virus. The class is taught in a Methodist church, but it reaches out to all who believe in God the Father, Jesus the Christ, and in Christ's teaching. If you would like, after the lesson, you might reach me with questions and comments at my email address, Lee Carson, lowercase one word, at juno.com. The title of today's lesson is The River of Life Giving Water. And the purpose of today's lesson is to respond with gratitude to the future hope that God promises. Many people over the years have claimed to have studied the book of Revelation and are positively sure of when and where Jesus will come again. I remember a few years ago, a group went up on a mountain to meet Christ. After the time came that he was to be there and it went and he hadn't shown, they had to slip away quietly and refigure their date, the calculation. But if we read in Matthew and Mark both, Matthew 24, 36 and Mark 13, 32, use exactly the same words spoken by Jesus when he said, but about the day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. The book of Revelation and parts of Daniel and Ezekiel are apocalyptic. And if someone says to you, I have them all figured out, well, take it with a grain of salt. I sometimes don't like teaching Revelation because it carries a great deal of mystery, of hiddenness, and expectation by some people. What it really carries are words of hope with beautiful and awesome pictures of the future meant to encourage Christians and Jews who were under persecution. During the fourth century, they needed some words from God about their future because Jews and Christians were being heavily persecuted by uh, Domitian, Rome's emperor. John didn't describe war, death, and destruction because there would be none. But instead, he told of a place of beauty and hope where God would wipe away every tear. There will be a new Jerusalem and a new earth. It will be God's dwelling place. He told of a city with streets of gold and of pearly gates. In Revelation 21.3, John said, I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. At the beginning of uh, World War II, I was a boy and we lived in a brand new subdivision along US 67 in Garland, Texas. A large culvert ran under the highway to Duck Creek and just a few feet down on the side away from the road was a white rock bank and it had a spring in it that I never saw go dry. That ran water into a small basin and then on down into the creek. All a thirsty boy had to do was bend over, put his lips to the basin to drink the sweetest, coolest water that ever was. On hot summer days, it renewed our lives. John wrote Revelation to renew the lives of those persecuted Jews and Christians. Revelation 22, the first five verses are our scripture for the day. And it says, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing down from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. There will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. 
I remember summer days when it was hot, we were dry. We drank from garden hose or we drank from the creek. When we could, we gorged ourselves on bottled drinks. The angel shows John a life-giving water that flows right through the middle of Jerusalem's main street. The river feeds and nourishes the tree of life whose leaves and fruit nourish it. This isn't just in the new heaven and new Jerusalem. Through the power of prayer, it's available to us right now. How spiritually thirsty are you right now? I often need to weed my garden and flower beds and water the lawn, but a good soaking rain helps me take it easy. The rain softens the ground, making it easy to pull the weeds, roots and all. And watering the lawn makes it brighten up and grow. Water from God's river of life helps me remove the weeds in my thoughts and deeds and brightens my life in prayer, in deeds, and in relationships. What would being able to look on God's face mean to you? Moses was afraid to look on God's face early on. In Exodus 3, 6, he says, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Here's another one about looking in God's face. It's a familiar psalm of David, Psalm 67, 1. May God be gracious to us, bless us, and make his face shine on us. And then when we get into Revelation, John says, all will look on his face. He says in Revelation, no longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will seek his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. <laughs> then poor old Job says God's face will make us happy. Job 33, he says, He is gracious to that person and says to God, Spare them from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom for them. Let their flesh be renewed like a child's. Let them be restored as in the days of their youth. Then that person can pray to God and find favor with him. They will see God's face and shout for joy. He will restore them to full well-being. Well, there will be no longer any curse because the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it and his servants will worship him. We will see what is hidden. In our den hangs two pictures of a couple. One, a young soldier in uniform and his wife in a dark blue lady's suit. Here you can see their pictures. One is of a young soldier in uniform and his wife in the dark blue dress with a croissant on her breast. They're standing close together. Then I have another picture. This picture is taken a few years later. The two pictures are of the same couple. One was the young soldier in uniform. The other picture of an old couple with gray hair standing just as close together. Two pictures are of the same couple. They're taken 66 years apart. The two pictures uh, of the people married, have been married 66 years. And to some, that seems like a long, long time. But to us, it's only been since yesterday. These pictures had hope in them, and they still do reminding us of what has been, and to us, they are good times. I'm showing to them to you because if we could see pictures of God and ourselves together, the pictures would hold of ourselves and God are just as real, just as important. What difference would it make to you if you could see yourself and God together over the years? A picture is a snippet in time an instant of time, locked in place. We can't change what the picture shows, but we can change what the next picture will show, what changes, what improvements we make between then and now. Our lesson title is The uh, River of Living Water. Water must be the most important of all the chemicals and compounds needed to create and sustain life. The human body is made up of uh, 55 to 78 percent water. In the beginning, God created the Garden of Eden, and it needed water. And so there was a river in Eden. 
a river watering the garden flowed from Eden, and from there it was separated into four headwaters. The name of the first is the Pishon. It winds through the entire land of Havilah, where there's gold. The gold that the land is good. Aromatic resin and onyx are also there. The name of the second river is the Gihon. It winds through the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris. It runs through the east side of Asher. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. Rain and snow melt run down from the mountains north of Galilee. They form the Jordan River. The Jordan runs through the Sea of Galilee and on down into the Jordan Valley to the Dead Sea, the lowest place on earth. The Jordan sustains life in Israel for fishing and irrigation, and Jesus was baptized in the Jordan. The Tigris and the Euphrates River, of which we're familiar, water much of the Middle East. Without rivers and lakes, much of the world would not be habitable. Our scripture uh, for today tells of the river of life flowing through heaven. Water is a true gift of God and necessary for life. We can go for days, even weeks, with little or no food, but two or three days is our limit without water. It's truly that which is life-giving. The author of today's lesson talks about the travels that are necessary in his work, causing them to often be away from home. <coughs> Pardon me for a minute. Like him, I remember nights away from home when my work took me to other cities. A motel room just isn't like your own bedroom at home. There's always a light somewhere piercing the night to keep you awake, a table to trip over if you get up in the middle of the night, and no companion to fill the bed beside you. At night, those places just aren't home. But even home cannot be home. We live in the piney woods of East Texas, where storms like the one raging as I wrote this lesson may knock out our electricity. When it does, I have a generator for most of our necessary needs and a goodly stack of firewood to heat at least part of the house if it's cold. Floods sometimes block the routes we usually take in our travels to town to church and other places so that we drive long distances to get a short way. When daylight comes, the floods drain down, the water warms, and it seems like a new creation. Revelation 22.5 says, There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. A promise of the future. No more nights fumbling in the night for a new flashlight battery because God will be illuminating the darkness with his presence. The Bible starts out, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over those waters. And God said, let there be light and there was light and God saw that the light was good. And he separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Then when we get on the other end of the Bible, towards the end of Revelation, John says, The Spirit and the bride say, and let the one who hears say, Come, let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who wishes to take the free gift of the water of life. And the very uh, best verse, the last verse of the Bible, John says, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. I want to comment on the two pictures I showed. I was trying to show us as God's children being with him face to face. Some people ask me how Bill and I managed to live 66 years together. Well, the young man that you looked at had only known his bride a short time. And then he got orders to go overseas. Was going to be gone a year and a half. And uh, while he was gone, his wife would be staying here by herself. That isn't a very good uh, number to add up for a long marriage. But when I got home, 
we got our first house, the first thing we did was find a church that we could go to. And over the 66 years, we raised two children, two grandchildren, and a great-grandchild that'll be here in another month. The reason we did, and I've thought about it since so many people have asked, is that we met God face to face. We found a church, and I think all Christian churches use water in different ways. Baptisms may be different, but we have the water of life in our churches. In the 66 years, we didn't miss very many Sundays. We were there, we raised our children in the church, and we saw God face to face in the church. What promises about water and light from God can you claim and share for not only yourself, but for others? I hope the lesson has answered some of those questions. Let us pray. God of light, God of life, grant us this day the ability to trust in your promises, not only for the future, but for this day, no matter our circumstances. Use me to share our life-giving water and your guiding light with others. In Jesus' name, amen.